As you may know already, we cover a lot of tutorials here on the channel, showing you what to do in Microsoft 365. But what about the things that you really shouldn't do? Because over the years I've seen it all, and there are some common patterns and practices that quietly lead to immediate or long-term problems, or just simply wasted time in your day. So today, I'm gonna to walk you through some of the most frequent Microsoft 365 mistakes people make without even realizing, and more importantly, how we can fix those problems and avoid them in the future. So let's dive in and check them out. So first off, this is a big one. Have you heard about an account role in Microsoft 365 called the Global Administrator? It's a role or a privilege that can give you access to everything in Microsoft 365 in your own setup. And of course, it's there for a good reason. But we also know that if you've set up all of your different services, it can be tempting to make your own account a global administrator that you can use daily because you can get everything done. But that's one of the biggest risks that you can take. Now, when you go ahead and promote your own account to a global administrator, you inadvertently give it access to everything, licenses, data, security settings, and more. What then happens if your account is compromised? Well, it could be catastrophic to all of your data and your wider service. Alternatively, maybe it's as simple as you accidentally deleting a colleague's account or misconfiguring a security policy. So the best way that we were working with a global administrator account is to use a standard account for all of your daily work. Yes, don't promote your own account to become a global administrator. Keep your global administrator as a dedicated account and log into it when you need to make changes. And of course, we always recommend at least creating two in case one gets locked out or compromised. You have another account that you can also take access into and set those up before you take the global administrator role off everybody in your company, because yes, Microsoft support are not too helpful when it comes to giving access to your global administrator accounts. And it's always nice to keep things simple by having one big SharePoint folder where you and your team drop everything in. But that lovely simplicity really turns to chaos quickly. And we've seen some businesses create hundreds of thousands of files in a single folder over many years. The problem then is you now end up with duplicate files, poor version control, broken links, security access granted to everybody in your company, and there isn't really a structure. And also now we can start to struggle when it comes to collaborating with your colleagues. So instead, why not use Microsoft Teams or SharePoint and guide your different structures? Create Teams, Channels or SharePoint sites dedicated to that piece of work. This keeps things relevant and clean. If you need more control, well, SharePoint offers more capabilities like metadata, search, filtering, and sorting. But remember, don't end up with thousands and thousands of files in a folder. There's just no easy way to clean them up later. So structure Teams and SharePoint to work for you. And this one's really common, and it's easy to do by accident. People often upload their work files to their own OneDrive for Business, then share them with their colleagues thinking they're collaborating as a team. But remember, OneDrive for Business is your own personal storage space, like your My Documents. You own the files, and if you left the company, they also could be removed, leaving a nasty surprise to your colleagues when they need to use your files later. So in short, use OneDrive to store your own work content. But for shared content, why not use SharePoint or Microsoft Teams? Because they're designed for group ownership and long-term visibility, giving you and your team access to those files, even when people leave or your roles change. So yes, put all of your shared files into a shared space in SharePoint and Teams. If some of these problems already sound familiar, don't worry, you're not alone. Most of the issues we've covered today come down to bad habits over the years, not a lack of effort. And that's exactly where we come in. 
because at Your 365 Coach, we help individuals and teams cut out these bad practices and replace them with new and improved ways of working using the tools you already have inside of Microsoft 365. So whether that's through on-demand masterclasses, live sessions, or coaching, we can give you and your team the clarity, structure, and confidence to get the most out of Microsoft 365 without all of the guesswork. You can explore all of the different options that we can offer you at our website link below, and let's help you to work better rather than harder. And so, let's dive back in. And we've all done this. You send someone an email, a list of time slots at your next available for that all important meeting. Tuesday at three, Wednesday at 10, or Friday after lunch. And they reply saying none of those times work and to send some additional times. And you're back to square one, writing out another set of time slots. It's clunky and it's a total waste of time. A much better option is you can use bookings with me in Outlook. It connects to your calendar, shows your real availability, and it allows the other participant to choose a time that suits you and schedules a meeting for you. Yes, no more double bookings or sending out those lists of times. So yes, don't waste your important time by listing your availability and just get yourself a new bookings page. So I like Excel, but here's the shocker. It's not a project management tool. So if you're using a spreadsheet to track your project tasks and goals, you're probably missing out on notifications, ownership, due dates, and any sort of live collaboration. You'll probably spend even more time managing the spreadsheet than actually doing the work on the project itself. So instead, why not use Microsoft Planner inside of Microsoft Teams? Simply add a plan as a tab in your team, assign tasks to your colleagues, set deadlines, and keep your team aligned in a single place. And if you need more advanced features like a timeline, dependencies, and more, well, Planner Premium has those features now included. And guess what? You can also embed that in a Microsoft team too. So it may now be the time to ditch those spreadsheets and set up a planner and stop worrying about co-editing that project plan. And something we often do is using email as our main project update tool. And it's a recipe for a mountain of emails. Your project team may end up replying to all, meaning a single project update you've requested ends up with 50 replies you need to sort through and all of your team are on the CC. That's not really collaborating, that's just noise and hassle. So instead, why not use a Microsoft team channel and have conversations to update where you are on the project in the conversation feed. Everyone can reply, react and stay in the loop and all your files are the right in Teams. But if channels aren't your thing, did you know that even inside of Outlook, we can now start a new group chat instead of hitting the reply button. So why not use that instead to cut down on those pesky emails and give your team the focus they need. So I'll just go and find that client file, the one we sent to the client, which has the words final V2 on the end of it. Now you may laugh, but we've all done it. Creating different versions of the same document with different file names quickly becomes unmanageable you end up unsure which version is the current one. People then change the wrong file and it creates confusion that's completely avoidable. Instead, why not upload your file to SharePoint or OneDrive for Business and keep the file name consistent? When you do that, Microsoft 365 automatically versions the file every time it's changed. And you can even roll back to a previous version if you needed to as well. And even better, using this capability allows co-authoring so you can work on a document together in your team, live and in one place. So we end up with one version and one source of the truth, making files easier to use in Microsoft 365. So those are the seven most common mistakes I see when it comes to working in Microsoft 365. And the chances are, well, we've all done at least one of them right. But the good news is, once you spot them, they're easy to fix. These aren't just small tweaks. They're changes to how you and your team can work, communicate, 
and ultimately improve the way that you all work together. But did I miss one? Why not let me know in the comments below? And if this video has helped you think differently about how you're using Microsoft 365, why not give it a like and subscribe to the channel to find more tutorials and insights just like this every single week. And other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.